Hey guys, welcome to my channel. I'm Kristen and today I am doing a deck makeover. It is finally starting to get nice here. So I need to get outside and I love crafting and I love DIYing items for outdoors. Um, this video is also sponsored by Cosway. So make sure you stay tuned to see this fun deck slash patio makeover. So the first thing is I'm going to be putting together this patio set. It is a sofa and two chairs a along with a table. So I think this is the perfect fit for a deck I'm going to be making over. So the deck is my mom's. I love coming over here. It is always so pretty and so homey and cozy. Obviously, it's homey. I grew up there, so it's always like my home away from home. So this is everything once I got out of three different boxes. I love this gray on gray. I think it is so pretty. The instructions were easy, and I was able to put this together on my own, although sometimes I did need just a little bit of help. Honestly, it's just easier when you have help and somebody can hold things for you or screw things in or read the instructions to you. But uh, eventually I did get all this together. It did take a couple hours being by myself, but if you just kept going, it probably would have been a lot quicker. So I did stop and go pick my kids up from school all of that such, get something for lunch. You know, I did quit a couple of times, but like I said, um, get some help if you can. Two people is definitely better than one. But I mean, all it is is a little Allen wrench and you're, is it an Allen wrench? It is definitely an Allen wrench. And that's all it took is to put this together. So it was pretty simple. This video is sponsored by Cosway. So they let me pick out a patio set to put together. So normally there's just a table and four chairs on this deck I'm be making over and I will show you a good before and after. Also, I'm gonna be doing some amazing, quick, inexpensive, thrift slash free makeovers on items that I had that I've been waiting for nice weather to finally go outside and be able to spray paint and stain. Um, I, this is, it's just a fun full out video. Uh, and also if you guys want to save 10% on your order, you can use my code, which is um, on the screen right here for you guys, or I will link it in the description box below. But this is what the patio set looks like when it's completely done, and you will see the full makeover at the end of the video. So this first one right here, I'm using this watering can and this pitcher. They were both from a yard sale. I wanna say the pitcher was $1.50 and the watering can was a quarter. Very inexpensive. I'm using this ultra matte Rust-Oleum spray paint in the color white, of course. And it did need about two coats on each of these. And I just wanted to make sure you could not see what was underneath. So I don't know if I really actually needed to do two co or two coats, but I chose to because I did have to like kind of flip them over. And then I just kind of go around it one more time just to make sure it is fully covered. And I'm using a quick little tarp that is from Dollar Tree. So I think that's pretty inexpensive for a spraying tarp. I'm using these Bells and Whistle Rub-On Transfer. This is from Dixie Bell, and I'll link this for you guys too. I love this farm rub-on transfers. I've used these last year, and I wanted to use some again this year. They're just so fun, and they're easy to use, and they're a little on the pricey end when it comes to rub-on transfers, but you can make so many different DIYs out of it. I think that the money that you pay and the items or the amount of items that you can make is it's a good deal for sure. And you get larger rub-on transfers. For the pitcher, I am also using a rub-on transfer. I kind of wanted these to go together, although they're not gonna be sitting next to each other on the deck, but I just wanted, I don't know, this was just like, it was calling to me and then it kind of was messing up because I am on like a round piece. So usually I will just do like half the rub-on transfer, then I'll go back and the F was messed up. So I just honestly used a different part of the rub-on transfer that didn't come off to fix that F and I think it looks really great. So for this project, I am using a saw. Yeah, we're going for it today. So I had some scrap pieces of wood that my mom gave me. So I decided to use those up. So I didn't have a ton, but I thought I could make a cute little planter box. Now this is about a foot, just over a foot long. And I just wanted this to go in the center of the table. I want it to be long and cute and all the things. So I did measure everything out and cut everything down to the way I wanted. There was, like I said, this is scrap wood. So some of this I did just have to kind of cut off the rough edges or just the kind of pieces that were cut, sanded everything down. And believe it or not, we're going to use 
wood glue for this project. Yes, I was going to go with a nail gun and I was like, I don't really want the nails to be showing along the edges or the sides or anything like that. So yeah, I went with Gorilla Wood Glue and clamp it for sure. If you have these, I did not have clamps. I have clamps now, so I can't wait to use them. I kind of wish I would have had the clamps and then did this project, but I didn't. And it's okay. This actually ended up staying together really well. Um, and obviously the wood was a different sizes and just like kind of a little messed up. So we did have some cracks along some of the corners and edges, and I will I definitely fixed those after this was dry. So I just waited 24 hours for this to dry. It was probably dry quicker than that, but I wanted to make sure it wasn't going to fall apart when I picked it up. So this held in good, no issues, and it has been sitting outside. Uh, definitely seal anything you do want to stay outside. And I'll link my favorite sealer in the description box below for you guys. Um, but right now I'm just using some spackle. I was going to use some wood filler and I'm like, you know what, let's go with spackle. It dries quick and I'm able to fill in those cracks so you won't even see them when it's completely done. So this is something that beginners could do. I'm not a professional by any means, but this works if you don't cut straight or you cut crooked, you cut wrong and you have those gaps. It works, trust me. So I just went along every little crack and filled them in with spackle. Once that was done, I'm just using a sa sandpaper. I was going to say a sander. It's not even a sander. It's just some sandpaper that goes on my sander. Sanded that speckle down so I was ready to paint. So my first thoughts on painting this was I am going to paint it white because I already had white paint on here. So I might as well finish it off, paint it white. But I wanted to go with the color Sage. This is by Waverly Chalk Paint. And it's almost a very light green, but it kind of gives off more of a gray color. So that is kind of what I wanted. I wanted like a bunch of different like neutral colors to go along with this whole theme. So we had the gray patio set. I wanted everything to kind of match, but I also wanted everything to flow together without a ton of color. Uh, obviously, we can always throw in some different color flowers and things like that, but wanted to go with something more neutral. So I'm using this Market Fresh Flowers. This is a Chalk Couture Silkscreen Transfer. And this one is an older one, so I'm not sure if they still have this available, but I will link it. I will link Chalk Tour in the description box. They always have some really cute transfers and they always come out with new ones every couple months. So you guys will be able to check that out. And I'm just using the Chalk Couture Chalk Paste. This is in the color Bright White. And you're going to see once I tear this off here that it did bleed through just a little bit. I didn't realize my... I damaged my stencils. When I first got Chalk Couture, I damaged so many stencils. That was because I didn't know what I was doing. And I would like put these on wet paint and definitely do your research first. Don't mess them up like I did. I've learned the hard way. They are expensive and you just don't want to do that. So it did bleed through the backside a little bit. And I just touched it up once it was dry with a tiny little paintbrush. And I got those paintbrushes from Timu and they're actually amazing. They're like great little paint brushes. They clean up really well and you got like an eight pack for a dollar and some change. It was super inexpensive. All right. So once that was done, let's go on to the next DIY. So this stool I've had in my garage for almost a year. I got this at an estate sale and it was $1. So I wanted to cut the legs off this because I want to make a plant stand. Did not want a plant stand this huge. A while back, I was on Instagram and I saw someone do something similar to a stool pretty similar to this. It was in great shape, great condition. This one was not like perfect, but it was still in good enough shape and it was wood, which sometimes like good wood is hard to find. Usually it's like MDF and you start sanding and then you're just, you're left with a giant mess. Uh, but I saw someone use a stool like this and they just like beat it up. It looked rustic when they were finished with it. They put dents and cracks and it looked incredible. And I thought about doing something similar to this. And then I just kind of started to go the safe way. Maybe someday I will do something fun like that where I just destroy perfectly good furniture and make it look old, but we'll see. We'll see if that ever happens. So I am sanding the top completely because I do want to stain the top, paint the bottom. This is what it looks like when it's completely done being sanded. I flipped it upside down and I decided to spray paint the bottom and I'm just using that ultra matte white spray paint by Rust-Oleum. It is my favorite to use. Rust-Oleum is kind of my favorite. Krylon, if I like the color, I will buy it, but I don't normally prefer that. I guess it really doesn't matter. It's all spray paint, I suppose. 
Um, so I'm just spray painting the legs and I figured if any of the spray paint got on the seat, I could just re-sand it, which is what I'm doing here. Just kind of sanding the edges, a tiny bit of paint got on that, but I do not want to do that. We're going to have some stain or we're going to have some stain on here. We don't want paint on there. It's been a minute since I've been able to do a good thrift makeover. So of course I got my sander out once again, when the paint was dry to, rough up the edges, make it look distressed. I love this style. I know it's not some people's style. So if you don't like this, you can totally just leave it as is and seal it. But I like the edges, that wood color along with some scuff marks. I think it looked really good once it was done. For the top of this stool, or we're going to call it a plant stand now since that is what it is going to be. Uh, I'm using the mid min wax in the color classic gray i've used this on so many projects and i love it so i had to buy a brand new can and if you guys can see here my sandals are back so if you are not new to my channel i always i'm always outside in some like ugly sandals these ones i picked up for a dollar at walmart last year and it's just like my sanding sandals my painting sandals like my running outside to take the garbage out type sandals but I love them. So you're going to see fuzzy socks for a while along with my nice little purple sandals. Next up project, I have three of these little wooden vases. These were just over $2 from Hobby Lobby and I'm using that classic gray stain once again my good old butter knife to open the lid up. Yes, I know there, there's things you can open paint cans with. It's like 50 cents to get a paint can opener, but I prefer the good old butter knife. Uh, so I'm painting the three of these or staining the three of these with that classic gray color. So I'm going to show you guys a small little clip of what my intentions were with these. Uh, I wanted to actually have some chocotour silkscreen transfers on here. They weren't actually chocotour, they were from Amazon, but they ended up bleeding through really bad. So, and I knew it may happen. So if you're gonna use stain with chocotour or any type of silkscreen transfer, you always want to seal your surface first. And it's something that I didn't do. I honestly just took my chances because I thought that since these were kind of small that I may still have good luck with them. Well, I didn't, like they bled through so bad they looked terrible uh, so I ended up just gluing the three of these together when I did a Hobby Lobby haul someone did say that they would look really cute that way so that's what I went with so this is a lantern that was from the fall time from Walmart and I didn't do much to this at all I did pull out all the fall florals and then add some greenery it was like a greenery wreath or a garland I picked up these from some sort of discount shop it came in a two pack and I just took one of these and then just kind of wrapped it all around the bottom of the lantern and then just added a battery operated candle to the center I think this would look so pretty once it is turned on at night so for this this is what the deck looks like before and this is what I'm going to be making over so this is always really pretty it's small and cozy so it does work um, obviously I was working uh, when it was chilly out, I have some boots on, I have my coat on. Um, we just have to work with what we wanted. We wanted this done before Easter so we would all be able to get together and sit out here. So the first thing I did was obviously add all of the furniture to the deck. So I started out with this one and I'm trying to figure out like where the center is, where we wanted these chairs. I ended up moving them so they didn't look like they were all lined up together, which I thought it looked good. And then I took a step back and I'm like, this does not look good at all. <laughs> like nobody, how can you talk like this when people are all around, uh, when you're all straight together? So kind of angled those off and then I'm adding that glass top to the table so this is really cool so it does suction on but i loved this glass i thought it was so pretty it was almost just like a black tempered glass i thought it was super pretty i loved this this was kind of like my favorite part is when this table went on i'm like this is so cute and then of course once you got all of that together situated you have to add the cushions onto this i like i said i love this gray on gray the gray the dark gray the light gray all the grays look so pretty all right, so this is the fun part is decorating. So this is how my little flower centerpiece turned out. This is 
my favorite piece out of all of them. I think it is so pretty. So now I decided to add the little plant stand and I ended up actually putting the picture on here. I actually thought it looked really pretty. I did throw in some florals. They're peonies and they are from Timu, but I thought this looked really cute in this corner and it did add just a little bit of color. And I did fluff them out and kind of removed some. It just, I wasn't feeling some of this, but so you're going to see me kind of messing around. This is this is kind of what you do when you are setting everything up. It's fun, but you just I want everything to be so perfect. So my camera, for whatever reason, unfocused out of that. But this little chalkboard was $3. It was already done. And then, of course, you got the three little wooden vases through some lavender in there and some greenery from Timu and then of course a little watering can and I thought it'd be pretty just to set it next to the steps so when at least you're walking up it's all pretty and then you lead it up to the deck I think this is so pretty I the before is not so pretty but the after is so homey so cozy I love the way this turned out it fit absolutely perfect on this deck wouldn't wanted anything smaller wouldn't wanted anything bigger it's just beautiful and I cannot wait to spend my time out here in the spring and of course in the summer and probably the fall as well uh, but you guys that is it for the video I hope you enjoyed this makeover if you did please make sure you give it a thumbs up and if you are new to my channel I would love you consider sticking around and subscribing and I will see you all in the next one bye Watch the clock ticking off the wall But tonight I'm letting it go Spend my coin for sure I'm gonna be myself Or I could be someone else No one's stopping me now I'm gonna skip my breaks I'm gonna make mistakes I just wanna feel alive It's just what I do when I'm out so Try not to hold me down Feel alive when I'm in this town Look at those beautiful stars I wanna drive a faster car Nothing can break me No, no, nothing can break me Try not to hold me down Feel alive when I'm in this town Look at those beautiful stars I wanna take a trip to Mars Nothing can break me No, no, nothing can break me Drive a faster car Lay my troubles to rest Blow the smoke through my cigarette City lights looking fine And I know this is my time now I'm gonna be myself Or I could be someone else No one's stopping me now I'm gonna skip my breaks I'm gonna make mistakes I feel alive It's just what I do When I'm out So try Not to hold me down Feel